does Ryan Suzuki have the upside of a top six or top line center? And what team would do best drafting him? Let's talk about it next. Welcome back to Hockey Scouting Report. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. Interesting prospect today. We're going to talk about Ryan Suzuki. Certainly one of the better centers after that top group of multiple centers, whether that's Zagros, Newhook, Doc, uh, Jack Hughes, Cousins, or others. But then we really see guys like Connor McMichael, Ryan Suzuki coming up as that next group, and of course, Philip Tomasino. And so, how does Ryan Suzuki's game develop over time? How has it looked similar to his brother, Nick Suzuki? Of course, he was that 13th overall selection by Vegas in 2017, now with the Canadians. And knowing that Ryan Suzuki was able to play with Andrei Svechnikov last year for the OHL Barry Colts, how did that help his development moving forward? When will he see NHL ice time? What is his comparison? So let's talk about it. Let's get right into it. But first, if you'd like to support the channel moving forward, feel free to check out my Patreon, linked in the comments below, as well as my Twitter, and of course, I'm also developing a podcast. Feel free to check out all of that. So let's get right into it. So Ryan Suzuki, like I said, he's a center, six foot one seventy six, slightly bigger than his brother, who's 5'11", 183. And what we see, interestingly, with them is undersized players, in order for them to succeed, especially at the center spot, definitely need excellent balance on the puck in terms of not being shaken off. We see that with someone like Pierre-Luc Dubois, obviously a much bigger player, 6'3", 6'4", but having that elite ability to stay balanced has really helped him. Ryan Suzuki certainly has that, also brings great speed to his game. He's also one of the best players in terms of hockey IQ that we have seen come out of the OHL in quite a long time. And I think that's very important to highlight. And so this year, assistant captain of the OHL Barry Colts, 65 games played, 25 goals, 50 assists, 75 points. Also bringing in 14 penalty minutes and a plus 7. This is not someone long-term who's going to be much of a penalty-killing force, doesn't get into the physical realm of anything really, nor the defensive end of things. And while he does have that balance and that ability, this is not a two-way player that we're talking about. Definitely much more of a passer, much more of a speedster. The game revolves entirely around that speed, that skating, that passing. And if you look at what he did internationally this year, World Juniors under 18 didn't really show much of anything, only having that one assist. But the Lincoln Memorial certainly was a great showing for him. Seven assists, eight points total. Not much of a goal scorer there, but definitely unleashing this elite playmaking ability that he has. And oftentimes he has this because he's able to drive to the shooting lanes and the passing lanes quite effectively. Not as much on the defensive end of it in terms of identifying those areas, but offensively definitely gets into the zone very quickly, very easily. Last year, having the ability to play with two elite snipers, whether that was Andrei Svechnikov as well as Dmitry Sokolov. Sokolov, 29 games played, of course, came over in a trade. 30 goals, 28 assists, 58 points. Questions have always been work ethic in terms of Sokolov's game. And someone like Ryan Suzuki brings great work ethic, great team play, great chemistry. So that really helps Sokolov be able to be a goal-per-game type player. Svechnikov also having that unlocking potential there. One of the best goal scorers in the OHL that we saw in that draft year last year. 44 games played, 40 goals, 32 assists, 72 points. And a lot of this really is part of Suzuki's game, allowing himself to be that elite passer. Like I said, this year, 50 assists. But last year, even had a decent showing, only 14 goals. Now, obviously, we see the goal scoring really coming from Sokolov and Svechnikov, who had 70 goals each, or total. But we also saw from Suzuki, 30 assists, definitely bringing that caliber to his game. Only 10 penalty minutes, so once again, not someone who's getting into the gritty end of it. In the World Hockey Championship under 17, this is really where Ryan Suzuki got on the board. Wasn't just the brother of Nick Suzuki, but really was potentially the more talented brother. We also see this in the uh, McLeod family, meaning that Ryan McLeod potentially is more talented than Michael McLeod. We often see that the youngest are more talented. Could we see the same thing in the Strom family? Interesting to find out. Ryan Suzuki, though, did get a great team to play with at that international stage. Six games played under the hockey championship under 17. Three goals, four assists, seven points. In the playoffs, in terms of his regular season abilities, didn't do much. Only four points, one goal. The goal swing really came from Svechnikov and, of course, Sokolov. 
But Ryan Suzuki has always had such talent behind him, and a lot of it's because of the name that he brings. Everyone knew Nick Suzuki was one of the most talented OHL players of that year, having elite decision-making, doing it at a very fast pace, understanding when he has to get to those zones, reading it very quickly, great hockey IQ, overall good skating, fantastic speed, and he's a great passer. And so a lot of this was really seen from Ryan Suzuki, who also brings very good offensive positioning, very good stick handling, somewhat of an active stick defensively, though that needs work, but also good leadership abilities. So Ryan Suzuki really brings potentially more to his game than what Nick brings. Ryan Suzuki was the first overall selection in the 2017 OHL priority selection. Interesting priority selection. Usually we see the top three or four picks are going to be first round selected players in the NHL draft in a couple seasons. Not the story here. The second overall pick was Tag Bertuzzi, and while having such great upside when he was picked, he's done absolutely nothing to show it, and not even being close to half a point per game player at this point, may not be drafted, may be drafted late given that potential. The fifth overall pick, Philip Tomasino, looks to be a late first round center this draft. Eighth overall was Jack Hughes. Obviously, Hughes would not come to the OHL knowing that he was in the USDP program, but seeing him drafted so high, we see how talented people knew he was just in case he would come over. What a chance to have him. 11th overall, Connor McMichael, who I mentioned as someone who will be one of the better centers after that first group of guys in this draft. 14th overall, defender Thomas Harley, maybe another first rounder this year. Then we also see 16th overall, Nicholas Robertson, 26th overall, Arthur Kaliev, who looked to be potential first round selections. 27th overall was Alex Turcotte who, of course, is in the USDP program. So, a talented draft, but definitely not top-heavy. The talent comes much more deeper into the draft. Ryan Suzuki has led it off as a talented draft. This year, he was the highest-scoring player on the team. The next highest was defender Tyler Tucker. He was the 200th overall pick by the Blues last year. So, the Barry Colts this year aren't much of a talented team. I mean, obviously, in terms of what they've done in the playoffs, they've been a very talented team. But they haven't really been able to extend themselves in terms of building forward and having that depth in first round, second round prospects. After uh, Sokolov, Svechnikov, obviously it hasn't been the same. Definitely though, Tyler Tucker being that next best, 68 games played, 59 points as a defender. Matej Bakar, he was the 94th overall selection by the Sabres last year as a center, 33 games played, 36 points. So we do see that talent there. Seven international games, U20, no points whatsoever. And so really, Ryan Suzuki is that elite presence on this team. Since uh, Svechnikov moving, this definitely is Ryan Suzuki's team. He's an assistant captain this year. And if we compare this to Nick Suzuki's numbers this year, he was with the Owen Sound for part of the season, 30 games played, 22 goals, 45 points. Bit more of a goal score in terms of Ryan only having 25 goals, 65 points. And then Nick Suzuki also having another 12 goals for Guelph Storm, which has had excellent play, obviously, in the playoffs, going all the way to that OHL Cup. 21 games played in the playoffs for brother Nick, 14 goals, 21 points. This is clutch performance, great playing under pressure. Ryan Suzuki certainly could develop in that way as well. But definitely Nick Suzuki is known to be an elite player in terms of the pressure, in terms of building forward in the playoffs. And so we definitely can see that with Ryan Suzuki as well. And so, like I mentioned, the characteristics that Ryan brings, I mentioned throughout, amazing skating, great at creating space, whether it's in the passing lane or the shooting lane, understands that speed is allowed to be used in creative ways to create those plays, to get into those zones, do those reads, certainly does that very well. Not much of a physical player, like I mentioned, and overall, the defensive abilities need to be worked on. The positioning defensively definitely is a question mark, but he does have a very good active stick defensively, and a lot of that is because he has very good hockey IQ, very good hockey sense, able to read and understand the plays. And so even if he can't get there physically, he understands where he has to be. And so what is the comparison and what is the best fit for Ryan Suzuki? The best fit is definitely a tough one. I have five teams lined up on this. And keep in mind that after we have, like I mentioned, that first group of centers, well, we then see Newhook, Lavoie, Suzuki, McMichael, and then Tomasino. So five, six guys that could be potential top 20 selections after that really that first group of centers. What a center draft this is. And so Ryan Suzuki could end up falling into the second round. It's unlikely, but we didn't expect Ryan uh, uh, Miglia to fall last year. Ryan McLeod obviously did fall. We didn't expect Akil Thomas to fall, certainly did as well last year. So these things definitely can happen. 
But the comparison is Matthew Shane. I think it's a good comparison. I've seen comparisons to Nicholas Backstrom um, at different points online. But I think Matthew Shane is the best comparison. 5'11", 194, very similar size. But both players are elite speedsters. And they build their game around skating and getting to those corners, making those shots. And because they don't have necessarily the physical build of their games, uh, Matthew Shane... Uh, having for his entire career 727 games played only 166 penalty minutes not much of a physical player injuries have certainly been a question mark for Duchesne long term we could see that as well with Ryan Duchesne we do see it with brother Nick and so that always is a concern players that build their game around speed it's always a question how effective can they be long term because speed usually is one of the first assets to leave a player as they get older as they mature and when we see something like Hockey IQ, it usually stays much longer. And certainly having that ability definitely helps him as well. Duchesne, extremely fast, always plays with passion, always plays with elite energy. Someone that, while there may be locker room issues, definitely lightens uh, the group overall. The playoffs this year for Columbus, 10 games played, 5 goals, 10 points. Been very clutch for them. What a system fit. Yes, being the UFA, could resign. For this season, counting both the games in Ottawa as well as games in Columbus, 73 games played, 31 goals, 39 assists, 70 points. This is what we could see from Ryan Suzuki. The overall comparison, uh, like I said, Matthew Shane, but the projection is really a top six, second line center, able to be 20 to 25 goals, potentially 40 assists. And so we could see something very similar to Matthew Shane. Last year, Duchesne's numbers, 82 games played in Ottawa, 27 goals, 59 points. This really is what we could see from Suzuki year in and year out. The career numbers for Duchesne, like I mentioned, 727 games played, having 232 goals, 315 assists. Over 500 points, close to uh, 550 points, 547. So Duchesne definitely is that impactful player in terms of offensive abilities. Also can shift to the wing because he is a decent goal scorer. Definitely can be a sniper. Very good skating, elite hockey IQ, and brings leadership abilities. But the entire game focuses around his speed. One of the best speed demons of the league. When you're talking about fast players, Duchesne's name always comes up. And so I think Ryan Suzuki definitely fits into that mold for sure. And so what is the best fit? Like I said, five teams come to mind. Of course, the Canadians are going to come to mind, 15th overall. And a lot of that's because they already own brother Nick. And so there's been rumors that the Canadians want to add in Ryan, continue to build that system fit. I don't think the Canadians will do this. I think the Canadians definitely need to add a defender. Someone like Vili Hainola seems to be an amazing fit for the Canadians or potentially the sniper like Kaliev. I think either of those would be great picks for them. Knowing that they already have Kod Kanyemi, who's looked amazing, Ryan Paling having that hat trick and the shootout winner in his first game, and then also having Dano, who's been very nice, and of course Nick Suzuki. While Suzuki could shift to the wing, you have three very talented centers there. All three are two way centers. You don't necessarily need Ryan Suzuki in that group. I don't see it happening. I think definitely taking a defender, whether that's Broberg, whether that's Hainola, makes the most sense, or someone like Kaliev. Now, if you look at 14th overall, the Coyotes definitely make some sense. Obviously, having Barrett Hayden, Derek Stepan's been decent, Dvorak dealing with some injuries, and then Alex Gochenyuk, not sure what's happening there. Definitely been a, a decent piece in terms of having the points that he's had, but the development track has definitely not been where they expected Gochenyuk to be when he was drafted, of course, in the Canadian system. So the Coyotes wouldn't do bad drafting someone like Suzuki. Might be a bit early at 14th if someone like Newhook is still on the board or a sniper like Kalyev. Definitely they could use the sniper. And so I think three teams are the best fit. One of them is more, in my opinion, as the overall best fit, and that's the Ottawa Senators. But I think the Golden Knights make sense, as do the Penguins. The Golden Knights at 17th, obviously they drafted Nick. And after trading Nick Suzuki as well as Eric Braunstrom, they need to continue to rebuild that future core. Cody Glass, amazing player for them, going to be an elite top six player, looks to be potentially the best prospect in all of college, uh, in all of uh, NHL hockey. Also, guys like Kale McCarr, Quinn Hughes are elite prospects as well, and of course, Vitaly Krobstov. But with Cody Glass, William Carlson, and Paul Stasny, that's a very nice center group. We don't know how long Paul Stasny will be on that system. Potentially, after his contract ends, will he stay two years from now? William Carlson looking very strong as a center there. Great speed, great goal scoring. Adding in someone like Ryan Suzuki, 
who needs at least two years in the OHL, in my opinion, to make that impact long-term, much like Suzuki did, uh, his brother Nick, potentially having another AHL season. It'd be great to add the brother Ryan. Might be a bit strange in terms of they once had Nick, but I think overall would be a nice fit for them. The Penguins are considering moving Evgeny Malkin, and they really don't have much of a future group, Kalen Addison being a very good prospect, one of their best in terms of a defender, but they need to constantly rebuild that center group, and if they are moving out Malkin, definitely add in someone that in a few seasons can step in. Ryan Suzuki makes sense. Penguins are at 22. I don't think the Penguins will be able to get Suzuki. I think he's going to be gone by 22. I think someone like Philip Tomasino is that better pick for the Penguins. And so the best pick, in my opinion, the best fit is the Ottawa Senators. And that's because the Ottawa Senators are building their game with speed. They got Shabbat, they got Bronstrom, building great speed, great playmaking, great hockey IQ from the back end. Then you see Brady Kachuk bringing that physicality. Someone like Suzuki needs a physical player to play with him because he does have those injury issues, or those risks rather, does have that issue in terms of not being physical enough. Brady Kachuk would be great for him. And then having that playmaking and speed ability with Colin White I think will also be a great fit for him. And then having the center prospect Logan Brown, who has amazing size, but there have been questions in terms of overall effectiveness and speed. And so I think it would be a nice dynamic, a nice change of pace type play between Ryan Suzuki, Logan Brown. One can make up for the other in terms of two-way play, physical play, and size down the middle. So I think long-term, that is the best fit. Definitely would be a great group to build with the Senators. Suzuki, White, Kachuk, and then Bronstrom, uh, Shabbat definitely would be a great power play unit for sure. So thank you guys for watching. Comment below your thoughts. What team do you think would do best drafting Ryan Suzuki? Is there any chance, in your opinion, that he could end up playing on the same team, the Canadians, as his brother Nick? Comment below your thoughts, and I'll see you guys in the comment section, and of course, in the next video.